What is going on, beautiful people? Today's episode, we're going to be talking about how to make it work with a narcissist. Whoop, hold up before you get mad, before you pull out the pitchforks and come for me. Stay, look, stay tuned. You know, stay tuned for more. Stay tuned for the breakdown, y'all. If you're new here, my name is Lee Hammock. I'm a clinically diagnosed narcissist, and welcome to another episode of The Narcissist Code. Okay, y'all. Okay, calm down. I know what people are gonna see this video. They see see the title of it. You hear the beginning of it, and y'all automatically hit the thumbs down. You're gonna to want to hit the thumbs up right here, y'all. Like I said, I'm not. This is not me trying to tell anybody to stay within a toxic relationship with the person that's not working on themselves. This is not me trying to say, um, give this person another chance. This is not. This is not what I'm saying. I know everybody can't leave. Everybody doesn't want to leave. So this is not me. This is not a judgmental video. This is just trying to give you the perspective of as to why you know how how to make it work with a narcissist. You know, because I, I, I do have a support group and this is one of the topics that we covered last night in my support group was how to make it work. You know, my support group link is in the description of every video and podcast I do. We meet every Sunday evening um, on Zoom and throughout the week as well with different, you know, different goal settings and things like that over Zoom. Just We just do a lot of chatting. There's a lot of people in there um, going through similar experiences as you looking for a community link in the description. Um, but yes, how to make with it, how to make it work with a narcissist. And this is this is the consensus from the group. And I already had this thought, but this is the consensus from so many people in the group that the number one way to make it work with a narcissist is to be ignorant to their behaviors. It's just be ignorant to their behaviors. I'm not calling you like I said, ignorant does not mean calling you stupid. y'all. It just means like just, just act like you don't know. Ignorance is a la lack of knowledge in a situation, not calling somebody stupid, you know. It, it, it is what I'm just saying. The definition of ignorance is not like you're dumb. I, I, I always tell people um, that um, I'm geographically ignorant because I don't have the knowledge. You know, the, it, the definition of ignorant is lacking knowledge or awareness, awareness in general. It's not it doesn't mean you're stupid. It's just like you don't know. You don't have enough knowledge to you know do it. So ignorant, like you have to act like you unaware of their behaviors. Like you have to act like these behaviors, whatever they're exhibiting to you, doesn't matter. That's one of the things that happens right there. Now, being ignorant, like I said, being ignorant to their behaviors or feigning ignorance to their behaviors could also be kind of flowing into great into the gray rock technique where you become boring and you don't give that per to give that person any type of your emotional reactions. But being ignorant to their behaviors in these relationships, just like because if you if you're trying to hold them accountable. If you're, they consider they would consider it nagging. You're you're nagging me. You're saying this. You're saying that. They would consider that nagging. They would consider that toxic. They would consider that whatever. You know, they would just say you being bitter and ungrateful, like, or you just too emotional. You in your feelings, whatever. If you're trying to do all of that, they will just beat you down emotionally. Some of them will, y'all already know. Some of them will take it to the physical, but a lot of them will just start to beat you down emotionally because they they want to hammer away at you because they want to beat you down to the to like an emotional pulp, so to speak. They want to get you to a point where they're hurting you and putting you like in a blender, so to speak, and to to literally mess with you. And this y'all, this doesn't stop. I, I think a lot of people get into this space where if you're in a relationship with a narcissist. And you are being ignorant to their behaviors. It doesn't like I just be real. Like why would it? Why would they? You know why would that get better? So to speak. Why would their? Why would their behaviors change? Because they don't want to be held accountable. So they want you to act like you don't see it. Or well, if you do see it, don't say anything. You know how people say like you know, if you see something, say something. Not in a toxic relationship. If you see something, you didn't see it. If you hear something, you did not hear it. Don't say anything to me. Just let me live my life how I want to live my life. Let me live my life by my rules. Let me live my life by my uh, without boundaries, with, with freedom. Let me cheat in peace. <laughs> you know, if you know I'm cheating, keep it to yourself. I'm coming home to you, aren't I? And you, I, 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 I provide for this household, don't I? Who I, I, can I? Why can't I cheat? That's the excuse you hear a lot of people say. So you got a good life, don't you? That's why I'm. It's okay for me to cheat. Then so many people will be okay with me cheating because I give you a good life, right? 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 You hear it? Yeah, I'm just telling you. You hear a lot of people say that. So that's the mindset. 
that so many narcissists and toxic people have right there is that they think that they can get away with things because they are in a certain position or, or because they provide you a certain type of lifestyle. This again falls onto you as a survivor or thriver to just decide what you want. Decide how your life is going to be. Decide how you want things to go. Because at the end of the day, it's your decision. It's your life. You have to live your life the way you see fit, the way you best to see fit. And like I said, there's a lot of narcissistic people out there that do this. So the, the best way is to be ignorant to their behaviors. Act like you don't know. And if you, like I said, and again, even if you do know, you don't know. Even if you do see it, you don't see it. That's the mindset. They just want you to be, they just want to live their life without any, any no holds barred, no boundaries, no, no, you saying no, nothing. Like this is the mindset of a lot of narcissistic people. They don't want you to say anything to them because that sucks for them. Now you got to hold, now you're going to hold me accountable. Wow. Wow. Really? You're going to hold me accountable now after all we've been through, after all we've done. Wow. Wow. They're going to you be up arguing the fuss and the fighting all the time. So, again, you kind of got to pick your battles in this position right here. So that's what I'm just saying. If you're dealing with a toxic, narcissistic person, this is kind of what you're going to have to go through when you're trying to, you know, get when you're trying to stay with this person. That's the best way to make it work is to act like you don't know. It's crazy how that goes right there. You know, you can, like I said, pick it, like this is another way. Pick and choose your battles. You don't have to be ignorant to every single thing, but you have to pick and choose your battles. And I know, that, like, yeah, I know this doesn't sound like a fun way to live. And I know people are just like, that sounds like a horrible way to live because you don't get to voice yourself. Like, you you pretty much have to be silent to what somebody, somebody how somebody is behaving, somebody is treating you. You know, again, some people are okay with that because they have a certain type of lifestyle, but, like, everybody's not okay with it. So you have to pick and choose your battles because that person is going to keep doing what they want to do because they feel like they're entitled to do it. So you have to pick and choose your battle. I'm not saying you have to be completely silent, but you're going to have to pick and choose how you want to go about doing uh, doing some of this stuff. You have to pick and choose how you want to go about surviving and thrive. You have, to, you have to pick and choose in these situations. So you have to choose, you know? So it just becomes into that space right there. You, it really is a horrible, it really is a horrible dynamic, y'all, to stay, try, to try to stay in a toxic relationship because you have to gray rock them to death because you, you have to protect your mental health. You have to gray rock or yellow, what people call it yellow rocking. Yellow rocking is gray rocking, but you give them a little bit here and there. You give them a little emotional responses. Like you, you are what Dr. Romney described it in, um, Tina, Tina Swinton described it as like gray rocking is cold. Yellow, yellow, yellow rocking is like w a little warmth added to it. The the rock is a little yellow hot. You know what I mean you see what I'm saying? The rock has been heated up a little bit. You give them emotional reactions when necessary. Like you complimenting them on things and whatnot. Like you're being, you know, you're being cordial to this person instead of like, you know what I mean? Instead of just everything just being a battle, you're being cordial to this person and y'all are, you know, seemingly having a good some good chats and whatnot. That does happen quite a bit. So this is the space that so many people fall into. And that's why I said, when you're dealing with a narcissist, like, yo, and I know this sounds bad. And I know people really don't want to live this way. And let's be realistic. Most people don't want to live this way. Most people just want to have a happy, have a happy, healthy relationship. But that's one thing that if you're dealing with a narcissist, it's probably not going to be possible, y'all. This you know, If you want to stay with a narcissist, you have to accept the fact that you're probably not going to have a healthy relationship. You have to change the, con you have to change the confines of, of your relationship to stay in it. If you so choose, you know, you have to change the confines, the, the mindset of it all. You have to change how you, uh, your outlook on the world. You have to understand the fact there's certain things that you're not going to be able to get from this person. Uh, radical acceptance, accepting the things that you cannot change and accepting the things that you can change. The most of the things that you can change are you. Most of the things that you can change in a relationship, toxic relationship or not, have to do with you yourself, your emotions, your physical growth, your physical well-being. That's the type of stuff that you are in control of most times. You can't control them. You can't control how they're going to act. You can't control how they're going to behave. You can't control how they're going to treat you. The only thing you can control is you. So that's one of the things that you have to like learn to accept in this space right here. Radical acceptance can help you out right here. Like accepting the fact that this is who they are. You know, accepting the fact that at the end of the day, this is who they're going to be. This is who they are. And this was, and I know that, that sucks when I have to tell people that, like, this is your partner. This is going to be your partner for the rest of their life. 
And people were just like, and some people, like, they're okay. You know, but like I said, you have to accept them for who they are. But Lee, I don't want to accept abuse. Y'all, what can you do if they're going, like I said, other than leaving this relationship dynamic to stop the abuse, to mitigate the abuse? And even when you leave the relationship, it doesn't guarantee that the abuse is going to stop. And I think a lot of people, when you get out of it, you realize this to be true that like just because you leave the relationship doesn't mean that abuse is going to stop. Post separation abuse is a real thing. Like when you leave the relationship, the abuse continues. They find a way to get to you. They got you have kids, you have businesses, you have finances. They they find a way to get to you. They find they find a way to continue the perpetual cycle of abuse. They find a way to hurt you. They find a way to put you through things. They will find a way. You know. So it's like I said, so this is one of the situations where y'all have to, you know, I'm not telling you to accept abuse, y'all. I'm just saying, what can you do to change this? Understand what you can change, what you cannot change. And like, it ha and like, I will say this right here. It has way less to do with you than you think. So many people are just like, well, I'm not enough. I'm not worthy enough to get love to. It's not you. It's them. It's them behaving in a certain type of way. It's them seeing you in a certain type of light. It's them at the end of the day it's them at the end of the day this is going to be them this is going to be how they act this is going to be how they treat you the only thing that you have control of or is you and how you want to live your life like i said you can live your life inside the confines of this toxic relationship dynamic but you can find happiness within it within yourself this person isn't going to change Radical acceptance. This person isn't going to change. You can either be ignorant to their behaviors and just live your life like this, or you can see what they're doing, understand what they're doing, pick and choose your battles, and choose your, to what happiness looks like for you. Because like I said, everybody's situation is uniquely different. And this is not me trying to shine doom and gloom on people's relationship. If you're dealing with a pathological narcissist, they're not going to change their behaviors without any type of therapy or hard work. Let's be realistic. Let's keep it, that's what we do over here, y'all. We keep it real, you know? We keep it real. We keep it hot. We keep it hot and ready like a little Caesar's pizza. We truly do. So that's why I want you to just, just prepare y'all. I want y'all to live the life that you want to live. That's the most important thing to me. You living the life that you want to live. Being happy doing it. Again, y'all, make sure you check out my support groups and whatnot. Like we, we chat about stuff like this every single week, a few times a week. There's multiple posts in there, like 200 posts in there. It's a private server and whatnot. It's not on Facebook, not on Instagram. It's a private group. Nobody ever screenshots and posts anything online. I appreciate y'all. Mental Hillness is out. Peace. Thank you so much for making it to the end of my video. I am extremely grateful for you have no idea. If you haven't already, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel, helps reach more people, and click on the screen to watch another video or to browse through another playlist. There's also a link on the screen to check out my courses and my support groups to help you heal and understand what you've been through. Thank you so much again. I will see you in the next video. Peace.